What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. We're doing one that you guys recommended a lot, The Outpost. I don't know about you, but I liked it. Dude, this movie is fucking awesome. At first, I was not about it. I started watching the first few minutes, and I was like, ugh, it's so, like, cheesy. And, like, I get their, their it's really accurate banter between infantrymen and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it's, but it just wasn't interesting. Dude, I thought, I thought it was extremely realistic. Like, yeah. the stuff they go through, the way they talk, mm-hmm. all of it. It was just a good movie. I liked it. And then making, like, certain people in the, like, uh, platoon or whatever, like outcasts and like got like that yeah. weird guy, and yeah. and then he ends up being a badass. And yeah. like, so you never know what's like what people are gonna be until you put them in those hard situations. Yep. So I think they hit it. Cool. Well, let's get into it. Fuck me, man. Fuck, Fuck me, man. Man. They usually come up that draw on the backside. Oh like, my gosh! Could you imagine being there? Like no. the helpless no. feeling. You land on the ground and you look around. And you're like, what the fuck? Pause there real quick, Abel. What people probably don't realize, because I've fought in in this environment, because I fought in Afghanistan and in the every rock, all those big rocks. So the ones all on the left, all those big rocks are perfect hiding positions. Oh yeah. So you're just completely surrounded by stellar ass fighting positions, and they have the high ground. So when people are like, like you think that you're gonna identify a person and start shooting at that person, mm-hmm. but they're so dug in. All you're getting is muzzle flash, muzzle flash, and then it's over here, and then they're coordinating. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, fuck, you're jumping around, dude. It's an absolute nightmare. The term that comes to mind with this is shooting fish in a barrel. Because yeah. it's like when they show the scene where they actually go up on the mountain and they're looking down, like you're helpless. Yeah. I mean, what can you do? How can you defend that? Why would you put that position there? Like what was so strategically important that you had to put a an outpost there yeah dude tom and i went to we got uh we went on a mission with infantry guys and they're like hey uh do you guys want to go with them they're all going on a foot patrol and we're like fuck yeah so gotten a bird they dropped us off on top of the mountain and then we're just looking down into these villages like oh my gosh that's us <laughs> because we're always doing our missions inside the villages and now we're standing on the top of the hill being like this is terrible yeah that's a terrible place to be. Like, we have all the advantage. What the fuck was that? The dog, it has a uh, flea. Yeah, we all have fucking fleas. It doesn't mean you gotta fucking kill it. Mother- so, did you guys ever get a pet? Mm. Dude, we we're in Nepal and we were coming down from this high altitude training area. And uh, we went through this village and this dog just started following us. And it was it was crazy because he had an American flag collar on. And uh, so it was just a, basically a collar with American flags all around it. And so he followed us all the way back. Like it was like a four hour walk. He Damn. followed us all the way back, completely left. He was like a the, the farmer had goats and stuff, just completely abandoned the guy and then came with us, walked onto the Nepalese camp with us. And we named him Hank. And he was the awesomest. Like he was so cool, but he hated Nepalese people. <laughs> <laughs> so... We'd be in our team house and he would sleep there and every, like he became our pet. Dude, that's crazy. And anytime the Nepalese commander walked in, like he fucking hated him. He'd like start growling at him. He nipped at him. He tried to bite him one time. And uh, one day, Hank just fucking disappeared. Uh, and we're just like, we're looking. We're like, where's Hank at? And uh, we were pretty sure what happened. It was the day after he nipped at the Nepalese uh, commander. Yeah. Pretty sure the Nepalese guys grabbed him and took him out and killed him. Probably. Fucking Hank, man. I still got pictures of Hank. I miss Hank. He was a good dog. We So funny, we actually, there was puppies outside our base in Afghanistan, and the Delta grabbed them and, mm-hmm. like, wanted to, to do Delta stomatic stuff because they go, our Deltas go through vet school, too. Uh, right? They do a lot of vet mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So he was doing all the, he was, like, <clears throat> taking care of these puppies. Well, these motherfuckers wouldn't stop yiping all night. Like, the whole camp couldn't sleep because these dogs, <laughs> all night long and so by the morning we're like dude you gotta get rid of those fucking puppies like do something with those puppies go give them to an afghan or something we can't keep this like no one can sleep i don't even know what ended up happening with them though they also disappeared (laughs) it's shitty how that happens we were trying to make plans on how to bring hank back such a sad story i'm sorry about (laughs) that's an 80 One shot. Super hard to do. So mortar systems, mortar systems are guesswork. So it's like you got to walk it. 
Uh, so it's part of being a Bravo is you figure out how to track like uh, and adjust your fire. Mm-hmm. But the first one, you're kind of just guessing. You see where your splash is, and then from there you could you know walk it back, adjust it in your sights. So you use a formula though, right? So it's an educated guess. Yeah, but that's so. How do you? Is there but a way to shot. account for the like the elevation and all that? Yeah. So all that like you have your you have your wheels. Man, it's been a long time. But each round has its own wheel, and then you could put in like the different data points for uh, location distance and all that stuff mm-hmm. and then it'll tell you like how many cheese charges to put on it for how much extra boost you need yeah, yeah. um and then from there it's just an experienced mortar team is gonna have well first of all i'll take that i go back a little bit because in a built-in base situation like this you're gonna have like pre uh set up spots for like the most likely um targeted areas mm-hmm. like if you have a funnel so you know that like 300 meters you uh, you know, there's going to be a perfect spot that you can get attacked from. Mm-hmm. Your mortar team's already going to have that preset. So he could say, hit this one, and then he'll put in the preset coordinates, and he'll be able to launch that and hit that spot. Nice. So that's likely how they got him with one shot hit with the 80. Um, is they already that, had that spot They already had marked. that spot marked because it, it's, like, so obvious of a position to get attacked from. So they put it in. They're a kick-ass mortar team, obviously. Um, and then they nailed him, which is awesome. Cool. But the one that he's hanging around like a dick – that's a uh, uh, we use those the most the 60s because mm-hmm. you could just have the handheld tubes yeah. so we would just pull them out throw it in because you could have where it, it fires as you drop it in or you could do the um, your grip fire so you just change it and then you drop it and it'll stay there you use your thumb kind of point you got an elevation on your handle and then you just squeeze it dunk, and those <laughs> are fucking fun dude. that's cool KLE is a key leader engagement so it's mm. just basically meeting they're meeting the village elders because um, we have to work alongside these people. So they're trying to build that relationship. That's a cool shot. Coming up to the top. See if you have been here for 14 years. No, no. Nah, nah. That was the Russians. <laughs> Justin Bieber punched him in the face. <laughs> hey, really? Yeah. Why? Why? He kicked his ass. Why? I don't know. They were at some bar or something where celebrity rich people go. Yeah. And he got into a confrontation with Justin Bieber and Justin Bieber laid out. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. That's funny. Dude, Justin Bieber's awesome nowadays. Who did he lay out though? Who was it? Orlando Bloom. Oh, now, dude, is that who that is? could you yeah. imagine back oh. in the day, be like, he got punched by like Justin Bieber, <laughs> yeah. like, baby, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Bieber? I it, thought you'd yeah, no, always be mine. Okay. So Bieber punched Orlando Bloom? Yeah, I don't Fuck remember yeah. the... Good job, JB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, telling you, I'll be, Justin's I'll be, killing it. I'll I'll know, right? I remember the first time I was running, I was like, I think I got like three Justin Bieber songs on this playlist. It's like, I don't know how I started liking him, but I like this guy. Dude, I was drunk at the airport, but when we were coming here, and I was like, re I was like, pain, recognize pain. I, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. You want to talk about Kaylee's? Sure. So they're doing a key leader engagement. This is an important one because they're trying to not get shot at all the time. So the best way that you could try and do that is by working with the elders, because if the elders tell the fighters, hey, back off, um, then they'll back off. Or you could do what they're trying to do, which is collect weapons and then pay them for, for each weapon that you collect. Um, obviously you don't believe in, in what you're doing. Like you don't believe that this is actually going to work. This is a transaction. The Afghans don't give a fuck. The elders don't give a fuck about you. Um, and you know that they're not going to be truthful and they're not going to be honest with you. So all the hugging, it's just a show, Mm -hmm. but both people are playing it. We had to do the same thing in Afghanistan. I'm sure you did it in a different, just a different fashion. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter if you're going on J sets or in Afghanistan, you always have to have that rapport. Um, so he's just, they're just trying to get as much money out of us and we're trying to get as much guns and uh, cooperation out of them as we can. So we can get shot at less. All It's just a, a negotiation. Yeah. Basically every, each side has an objective mm-hmm. and they're both trying to get that objective. So you're trying to meet in the middle hundred percent to get the best outcome. So, yeah, but if the, it would be the wrong answer to think that like both sides are being honest. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah like not American either. I'm not saying that we're like the good guys and we're, you know, like, no, like, listen, we need you to do this. And they're like, yeah, we want your money. Yeah, exactly. So, that's how it is. It sucks. Key leader engagements suck because you know that you're just fucking buying the, the smallest. It's almost like an informant. 
mm-hmm. that's going to like fuck over the people that no one cares about, yeah. but they'll never sell out the, the real hitters. There yeah. it is. It's better be a fucking joke, huh? Give me that fucking oh. photo, you, oh, you dirty motherfucker. Motherfucker. Get out of here, you dirty bastard. You took it off to my fucking wife? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm sorry. Get I the fuck so down. He she's doubled so pretty. down on it and said she's so pretty. I'm fucking sorry. Start pushing. I'm sorry, Olivia. I'm sorry, Olivia. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Mrs. Hart. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Hart. <laughs> he kissed her. <laughs> oh, dude, that's he fucking kissed hilarious. The picture. I just like that one. Dude, I love that. That's fucking awesome. Because that shit would happen. And he took it really well. He was like, he was like, just making him do push ups. Yeah. He didn't punch him in the face like immediately, <laughs> which is most people would have just been like, I just love the fact that he's like, oh, she, she's really pretty. <laughs> she's really pretty. And then he kissed the picture was the best part, man. That's fucking hilarious. You guys are out there. Like, how many guys, like, you know, got, like, in fights with each other or just got sick of each other? Oh, or having to do with, like, talking about somebody's wife or something? All the time. Really? Yeah. It's just, especially if you're able to get a hold of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, and, it always revolves around that. Yeah. So, like, I got in fights over my with my teammates sometimes. Just, like, I remember uh, he was, like... I said something about fuck two six, which is our team number. I was like, fuck two six is just a number. And that to him, like, which is rightfully so, he was like, I was saying fuck the team. So he took it as fuck the team. And I was trying to say two six is just a arbitrary number, it has nothing to do with us as human beings and as a team. And he almost fucking lit me up. Like he got up and he was about to fucking deck me. And I was like, here we go. Yeah. And then one of my other teammates was like, all right, guys, nah, let's just fucking Tom was like, the other guys, you, let's just calm it down. And I was like, listen, bro, in, because guys are drunk and stubborn, you're, you you don't apologize. You just double down. You're like, yep. fuck two six. He's just like, this is it. This is it. Like, that's what you do. You just double down for some reason. All of our team fights revolve around alcohol. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just it's a lot of pent up aggression and yeah. you're stuck with each other all the time and most of the time you're on this epic high just like our team and every once in a while it turns into fucking yeah. <laughs> the highs are just as deep as the lows but once you're like isolated in that environment for so long and then like the testosterone's flowing everybody's mm-hmm. frustrated and then a little alcohol in the mix and <laughs> it gets dark <laughs> it's quick. a powder keg <laughs> but there's an agreement that like if you punch me in the face that's fair fucking game if, if you fight there's nothing wrong with that there's and- the no cool thing is, it. like, it's all cool after that. Yeah. Like, all right, it's over. I it's fought done, t- dusted, it's over. I fought Tino on the range. Oh, uh, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> fucking fought- Tino of all people? Dude, we didn't have a choice. He was talking shit about my shooting. He's like, oh, I shot better than you. Aren't you a Bravo? And I was like, Tino, if you say one more fucking word, I'm going to deck you. And then the, the seniors heard it, and they're like, nope, everybody circle up. Tino Buck in the middle. Let's go fight. Oh. And so Tino's like, are you fucking kidding me? It's like me? a mandated fight. Yeah, it's like a mandated fight. And I thought Tino was going to be like, I don't want to fight because he's not a fighter, you know? Yeah. But he said, fuck it. Bah. He had to. He had to. He was the new guy on the team, right? Yeah, we team both sergeant. were. Team yeah. sergeant. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. We both were. New guy. It's like uh, South Park's like, yeah. cripple fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to see the new guys go against each other. Yeah, he, he hit me and I bit my tongue and so i'm like spitting blood out and, I, oh. <laughs> I, and then like i put him in an arm bar on the range and so people are like oh jujitsu doesn't work it's like bullshit i fucking slammed him on the ground he punched me in the fucking mouth and then i put him in an arm bar and it went so fast it's not like could have just broken his arm but he was like all right i'm good and then we're cool as shit we just finished yeah. the range day nice he's one of my one of my great friends to this day <laughs> tino's cool i like yeah. tino hey what are you drinking there man uh, it's a mini little Corona extras. Oh, that's so cute. But in your Thanks. hand, it looks like a regular one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been that's saving good. that for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abel sat on that one. That's a good job. Hey, I like Sean's fucking oh, joke. Time, last night. time and place. All right, time so. and place. I so just fell. Oh, someone's inside of it? Or did they, did they bail? Captain Keating was inside. That's how he died. Oh, he died in that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't miss that part. So, all right. So just for context, what happened, remember, they were driving the mission, and he was like, basically, Captain Keating was one of those good leaders. Right? Mm-hmm. It shows, like, he was, like, the cohesive, like, he was protecting the men. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's a shitty mission. I'm not going to make anybody else do it, so mm-hmm. I'm driving the truck. Um, so he drove the truck. They had to get out to, I guess, ISR. So basically, they had a drone overhead that... Mm-hmm. Um, 
basically called out, identified a hot spot, so they had to stop the truck and check it out on foot. So as they're doing that, they're on basically the side of this mountain, and it's just wide enough for the truck. As they're checking it out, the road gives way, Oof. and the truck falls. And so the driver, obviously, he's not getting out of the truck. For one, he can't from this side. Yeah, no. That guy's acting right is terrible people. to me. That is so bad. That's Clint Eastwood's son. You, you for real? Kill our comms. Kill our comms. <sighs> He can't stop moving. Fighters on the switchbacks. That'd be a race. Get inside the wire before our supply. Oh, it's it's yeah, cringy. I think it was beautifully delivered. Yeah, that's right, partner. It's a masterful yeah. exercise of uh, artistry right here. Are you a fanboy for this <laughs> movie? Does he try to be his dad the whole time, though? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I know. He's, like, he's got the breathing. Uh, yeah. he's, like, he's like, my dad made this look cool. <laughs> so I'm going to make it look cool. Basically, this is, they're up in the mountains, and they're looking down at the village, and they're like, realizing that they're fucked like they can't defend from that and he's yeah. like well if you were the enemy how would you do it and so then he basically goes into his spiel and like talking to how he would attack the village if he was them it's it's spot on it's basically what happens at the end of the movie but it just shows that they're in such a poor location like yeah. why would you put that outpost there yeah like and uh, continue to send people there it's just it's almost like a suicide mission just being there like um Restrepo. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So each time they're doing these small engagements and they're learning what our tactics mm -hmm. are, what their and the outpost tactics are, every time they're learning and then they're just compiling all these notes just waiting for the big one. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, now we've got them figured out. This is how we're going to do it and we're going to overrun the base. Yep. And as we see at the end of the movie, it works like happens. a charm. Yeah. Red flags colloquialism. I think I was getting drunk at this point. <laughs> 124.50. What am I? This money it's for building the school. For bringing power and water to or mule, sir. Or mule. But now I have to hold on to this. So you help me. It is an honor to be among such courageous men. What just happened here? is it sets the tone for the rest of the movie because Captain Keating made these promises. Mm. This guy comes in and basically is like, we're not going to do this anymore. It's like, here's your money, but you can't have it. So it kind of like, I think this is when they kind of lose the support of the village elders, which uh, you talked about earlier is so important. Yeah, that's a good point. I missed that transition where Captain Keating died because I missed that part. <laughs> but that you're right, that perfect connection. He's the one that built that relationship. He's the one that made promises and planned to stick to those promises. And then once he lost their respect, mm -hmm. it's a wrap. Game now, over. It's fair, fair game. You're SOG, right? Yo, what's up, Sergeant Mohammed? Come in. Tell him exactly what you told me. Salam, bro. I've just been to death. Salam, bro. Just stop telling me that Taliban are coming on us. <laughs> the villagers are not happy, sir. They are complaining about their money, the school, the road. The previous show I didn't go well, sir. Everything. And I really believe that this time my source are telling me that the Taliban are coming on us. How many are going to come on us? A lot. I don't know, a lot. <laughs> like um, in a row or at the same time? <laughs> the, the, the British invaded us and they didn't listen to us. They thought we were stupid. They were crashed down. Right. The Russians invaded us. They so thought we were stupid. Right. And, they were crashed down. and now we made the same mistakes. Mohammed. We don't need a fucking history lesson, okay? You know why we don't listen to you? Well, because every week you tell us the same damn thing. Because You're always crying. You're always crying wolf. Of course, we're, we have the Taliban surrounding us all the time. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of Afghanistan. We get hit every single day. You coming in and yelling, the Taliban is coming, the Taliban is coming, just added pressure, man. The yeah. Taliban is coming on us. <laughs> it's like all at the same time. <laughs> <we're in a laughs> it's, just, it's so funny. It's like the language barrier, like clearly he's, he, he's distressed. He's yeah. like, look, they're coming. And, it, and this guy is just like, oh, yeah? <laughs> like a Bukaki? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, watching this, knowing the ending, you might think, like, oh, those fucking idiots, they should have listened. But he explained it really well. It's like, that shit happens because Terps are scared shitless all the time because they're in a really bad spot. So, like, they can get killed going home by the Taliban because they're going to find out that they're uh, interpreters and they're working with us. So they're always in fear. So they always have something to say. And then there's some that are just shady and like want money. Um, so they'll try to exploit situations. So you can't, you got to be really careful about the intel that you get from them. Cause it, sometimes it's just all over the fucking map <laughs> and you're just like, dude, 
you got to stop. Like, this clearly is not fucking real. Yeah. I have one guy that's like trying to fucking an interpreter. He's trying to sell um, or buy our brass. He's like, hey, man, you guys throw away all this brass. He's like, I'll take it. I'll take it off your hands for you. He's like, I'll pay you. He's like, we'll give you money for the brass. I was like, fuck you, dude. I'm not selling you brass. You can just all fucking reload it and sell it to the fucking <laughs> ISIS. You Taliban fucker. But it's just all good. <laughs> you never know their angle. They seem to always have an angle, though. Yeah. I just think he's talking about they're coming on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole time. I, I put an arrow next to that one and said, Com- <laughs> coming on us, exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, usually we do the front. That we want able to have, actually have to work. Yeah, because he's kind of lazy sometimes. He just sits back and gets drunk and yells at us. Yeah, he's rude. From yeah. behind the lights. And then he tries to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sergeant. Yeah. You like to fuck one guy. Gun in your head. Scooter B. No gun necessary. Chuck Norris. Ooh. No gun necessary, <laughs> Chuck Norris. <laughs> so you're going to stop it there. That is probably like... A, a super accurate like military conversation yeah. that you have and it's like there's those type of conversations happen all the time all the it's time like, who are you fucking the whole fuck Mary kill yeah and then like alright you gotta what's the other one uh, would you rather suck one dick a hundred times or yeah a hundred dicks, dicks one, one time, time. <laughs> <laughs> there's just something about those conversations that take you out of everything else yeah. and it's just like for that couple seconds you're laughing and it's like what is he gonna say and he said no gun necessary, Chuck Norris. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go on Chuck Norris, but no, not at all. Hundreds are coming on us. Fucking said that before last week twice. And then he's a new catchphrase. I just realized he went into the porta potty right then, and at the end of the movie, they find him in the porta potty. So he sat in the porta potty for the entire battle. The turt? Yeah. Dude, could you imagine that helpless feeling? He's like, oh, fuck. Like, his heart just is, just sinks right there. Yeah, it's, it's like, he had to check again. It's like, I don't believe what I'm saying. Just another fucking day in Afghanistan. And he's got his pistol. Outgoing. Nope. Incoming. Nope. Hey, get out. We got contact. It's it's so accurate how like nonchalant getting shot at becomes, and that's what they're showing. They're like incoming, outgoing. Like I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's like, like how many fucks should I get? Yeah, yeah like everyone's like you probably watching this thinking like, oh, I would be freaking out. Everyone would be high alert. And it's like no, your fucking senses get numb because it's like it's always some shooting. And then you start to listen. We we're in valleys, and I start to, I would legit start to hear the difference between around going past me and around going away from me. And then if it's close or if it's not close so that you could start to hear the difference, you start hearing it so much. So it's like, crack, crack, crack. Like, nah. And then all of a sudden, snap. Okay, time to fucking pay attention. Your heart rate shoots up. But everything else, it just gets numb. So me and our, our Delta one time, we're just fucking, things are blowing up. Like pe- other people are in contact mm-hmm. and we're so hot and like overheating. I fucking dropped our pants and just like laid on this dude's cot, this ISIS dude's cot. And we're just like, we're going to fucking like die of heat exhaustion. And so we had to like take a, like a little power nap. Yeah. Jesus. And so we just dropped our pants and just laid there fucking <laughs> like, and shit's blowing up, but it's not directed at us. So right. we knew we were good. And then finally we're like, all right, where'd you get back? <laughs> I, guess. I was like, hey, it's time for my five minutes. So I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Clock out real quick. Talk yeah. Oh. All right. So I don't have. So all I have here is like thirty minute fight because this is where it got really good and I just yeah. watched the movie and it's just fighting. This is an awesome scene. So I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to, we could talk about some parts. Um, the next timestamp I have is twenty six twenty, and that's when the air comes in. So when they finally get the, uh, where they get Apache, not Apaches. Yeah. So important distinction with the. We good? Yeah, I was gonna say maybe watch some of it and then talk what you had talking points. Yeah, so important distinction with this battle that's going on is like that you may not pick up on is how accurate they were on the ammo shed. So Mm -hmm. like you said earlier, they were collecting intel that whole time. So they're watching to see where they're pulling the ammo out of. They're watching to see the mortar pit location. Um, They knew everything dialed in. They tried to hit the talk. 
mm-hmm. to take out uh, leadership. So it's not just like that was a very focused attack. Every time that guy went to get ammo, fucking around hitting by the ammo shed. So they had it. It was fucking dialed in attack. And the the other part that we kind of missed or glossed over, they had somebody on the inside as well. So if oh, you remember right. that one he part, recording. he was taking pictures. Yeah. So they knew, you know, they had infiltrated somebody in the base or they infiltrated the base. So they knew the exact locations of mm-hmm. these places. So this is something they were planning out for a while. It wasn't just like a haphazard attack. Like no. this is a well-organized attack and yeah. it was, you know, largely successful too. Right. So. And we had those issues all the time where you're always watching people to see if they're pacing. Mm-hmm. It's like, why is counting he off steps yeah, and counting stuff. steps? Why is he walking the perimeter? Because they're trying to do mental maps and then they'll go out and draw it. And you don't know who it's going to be because you have Afghans that are the cooks. You have interpreters. You never and they leave base. A lot of them, mm-hmm. like some will live with us, but most of them leave. And so they're vulnerable when they leave. So if they get hijacked and kidnapped and then the Taliban are like, listen, you work for us. Now you're dead and mm-hmm. we'll kill your family. You yeah. best believe that they're going to fucking give them everything they want. Yeah, and green on blue attacks or, you know, Afghan, your partner force attacks against the U.S. attacks are extremely common, too. Mm-hmm. It's like actually the one um, Jaguar, that was a green on blue, which is, you know, unfortunate. But they turned on us and, mm-hmm. you know, he ended up getting killed in that. Oh, get him out there. Get him in here. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Those RPGs are accurate as fuck yeah. to about like 300 meters. An RPG shoots like a fucking laser beam. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. And an RPG will take that up. Mm, oh, yeah. And that's a big target, too. It's not yeah. moving. Yeah, so the fact that you're just, you're the small arms, you're kind of like, mm, this is uncomfortable, but you're just butthole pucker waiting for that fucking rpg to smash into you wow because you're gonna die i watched a dude we were leaving a a fucking village and this fucking afghan was in the gun turret sleeping and i was like that motherfucker and all of a sudden rpg goes i was like "Ah?" and he's sleeping and he goes and he wakes up (laughs) pissed me off dude we're in a fucking we're like in a really dangerous situation didn't realize we're about to be in a huge gunfight, but he's fucking sleeping. That means, like, you're a gunner. Yeah. You're supposed to be paying attention <laughs> so you can fucking shoot back and you're sleeping. Yeah. Everybody to stay back for fucking reason. Fuck that, man. Dead bodies attract more dead bodies. We have two KIA already, okay? We got to the fucking aid station, man. Work in the fucking aid station. Okay, so, so how much of this, like, uh, arguing or back and forth actually takes place? Or- is it basically the sergeant says something, you shut the fuck up and do yeah. what he says. Yeah, you do it the fuck you're Because in every movie you see like, no, Sarge, what about? And No, and it depends on the unit and mm-hmm. like the relationships that they have. But typically it's like, sergeant says something, you fucking do it um, and you shut the fuck up. But in these kind of situations, it's like, it's so dangerous that the, the rank structure kind of dissipates. It just becomes human beings and everyone who has a gun is so important um, because you're all just trying to stay alive. So that it makes sense that in these more austere environments, like the rank structure gets a lot more lackadaisical. Um, but you see it here, too, because uh, at one point, the lieutenant who's now in charge because there's no captain is like, hey, here's the plan. Everybody fall in on the talk or the tactical operations center. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like everybody come here. I said to, yes, but I don't fucking remember. <laughs> everybody come here to the talk, um, which is basically like the headquarters area. But then Sergeant or whatever, Clint Eastwood's son, mm. is like, no, let's all go to the, I think, the ammo depot or whatever. And then he's like, no, we're going to come here. And he's like, no, we're going here, sir. And it's just like one of those, it's like a back and forth. Where, How authentic is that? Well, yeah. I mean, at this point, everybody's life depends on yeah. it. So he's like, no, it doesn't make sense make for us to come here. Yeah. So we have to go over gotcha. there. And then finally, the officer is like, okay, then let's do that. Yeah. And those kind of situations, also, there's like a time and place. Like something like that's not really going to happen in front of all the men. Um, or in front of like the masses, but once you get like behind closed doors, you can kind of, you know, challenge people a little bit more, you know, and a good leader in my experience kind of appreciates that as well. Cause like, all right, you don't always have the the right answer. So if you, I don't care if you're a fucking private, if your plan's better than mine, let's do it. So if I'm sitting there as a staff sergeant and I'm like, we're going to do this. And some privates like, I think we should do this. And if that makes sense, like, 
Yeah, let's go All with right. that. Like, this isn't about winning awards here. Let's fucking stay alive. And a good leader would recognize that and, you know, go with that. A bad leader would stick to their guns and, like he said, rush to failure. Don't rush to failure. So this is their big rush. So they know, like, it's, it's a wrap. Yeah. Oh, thank the Lord. So like, couldn't have come. Ah, he's, he's like, did I do gun? that? <laughs> he might have thought he shot an ID or something, like, on accident. So that's one of those moments where it's like, fuck, we're done. And now all of a sudden, like, thank God, last second, yeah. they finally come in. Dude, we've been surrounded in a gunfight like this, in a bull, and we're just taking contact, taking contact, like, fuck, dude, we can't get them. And we're getting, uh, that's when the Terp got shot next to me. And the fucking Apaches flying around, we have no contacts. We cannot find them. So then we found a cell phone from that battle, like, later on, because mm -hmm. we were going through the... Uh, ISIS dude's phone or the Taliban's phone and we're like oh fuck this is from our gunfight they had a, a rock fighting position that had cover of a rock it was like a little cave yeah and so he had his PKM he would jump out and then go back in the cave jump out go back in the cave so every time we called out the location like hey we got fucking muzzle flash here the bird would go over and be like we can't see him where are they Damn. so like we the bird was fucking useless so all the time you guys watch this we're like oh Americans would be fucking helpless without uh, aircraft. Like, fuck you. There's times when aircraft like them are down forever doing refuel or someone else has them on a different mission um, or they just can't find anything and it's up to you to do it. So we fight just fine without aircraft, but damn, that shit helps. <laughs> All right, you want to wrap up the movie? Yeah. Do it. So this one, probably good to point out, this is the only, I think, so this is the only battle ever, I think, or the only situation that happened where there's like two living Medal of Honor recipients from the same battle. Oh, shit. So this is, you know, highly decorated for Valor. You know, a lot of people, as we see in the movie, were doing some pretty courageous stuff. They were put in a bad situation, though. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it probably could have been avoided, but they were there and they made the most of it, I guess. Yep. Step up and do what you got to do. All right, guys. So there it is. There's a review of Outpost. Thanks for coming to Beers and Breakdowns. Uh, I hope you guys, you, I, we know you like the movie because you recommended it to us to watch so it. many messages for this. Tons <laughs> of messages. Watch the outpost. Watch the outpost. Well, if you're asking our opinion, it's super accurate. I mean, it is crazy accurate. The banter, the gunfights, the pure luck of shit just going wrong when he's trying to help his buddy and then he fucking crashes the Humvee and it gets stuck. That shit kind of, ha that shit happens in war and it's like, you're just doing the best you can. And then when stuff goes sideways, like that's your new your new norm, and you got to you know adjust on the fly and deal with it. So this movie was insanely accurate. Um, some damn heroes, and this would be a nightmare situation for anyone right. to be in. Yeah. So they did the, the best they could. They and it was awesome. So hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you guys on the next episode.